Praxis Prepper. Wee Everybody, this is Praxis. Have you ever been criticized, but then after you thought about it, the criticism was actually more of a compliment than anything else? Here in our culture, we have plenty of the reverse, where someone will kind of issue a compliment, but it's really more of a veiled criticism. Here's an example that you might issue to me, would be, wow, Praxis, you must have such a high self-esteem to be okay appearing as you do in most of your videos. Uh, you know, where it's like, you know, it sounds like you're complimenting the person, but it's really the opposite. Well, sometimes the opposite happens. As a YouTube host, I get plenty of, you know, straight up, criticisms, I get plenty of compliments, but sometimes I get uh, something that is, you know, uh, kind of that thing where someone thinks that they're criticizing you, but it's really a compliment. And I've gotten a lot of this kind lately. I wanted to share it with you because I think it's it's telling and it's helpful to think about it. Uh, the the uh, criticism that I've gotten is, you know, Praxis, you are just really out of touch with reality. You live in this fantasy land. You know, there are people suffering all over the world right now, and you just don't get it. You are just too out of touch with what's going on in the world to, uh, you know, be a valuable resource to even listen to. You know, you're just, you're out of touch. You're out of touch with reality. Well, being out of touch is actually kind of exactly what we are striving to do as preppers. Uh, that doesn't mean that we, as preppers we're trying to get to a point where we uh, can lack um, uh, compassion for other people that are suffering. In fact, that's what I do here on the channel. I don't do this for me. This is to try to help. Well, I kind of do it for me. Uh, I, I'm trying to spread the knowledge of uh, uh, preparedness uh, out uh, to the world to help people because uh, I it's really improved a lot of my life and I would like to spread that out to other people it does kind of selfishly help me as well though because the more people that we can spread this knowledge out to uh, the less bad things really get in a crisis situation because we all know when the shit hits the fan uh, there's the actual event which is bad but what's oftentimes worse is other people's reaction around you if you're prepared and they're not it's uh, it creates a lot of problems for people who are prepared uh, the unprepared people so it is kind of selfish that I'm trying to help people in the world because it is good for me as well uh, to try to uh, help people just because it makes it so things aren't quite so horrible uh, you know when things do go wrong but you know largely I do it because I like to help people this is uh, really contributed a lot to the quality of my life and I want to share that with other people so getting out of touch with reality uh, is not something that requires you not caring about other people but what you're trying to do is to get out of touch with the suffering and the pain uh, so you're not kind of enduring that personally uh, I know that uh, you know most preppers myself included there was like some kind of an event or a, a kind of a matrix of events that kind of got us all started down that road mine very long story short is that I lost power for nine and a half days uh, that was really inconvenient and I didn't want to do that again so I you know began endeavoring to uh, you know protect myself from that in the f uh, from that happening in the future and that was before I even knew you know the word prepper or what a prepper was or anything this is like you know had to be Gosh, at this point, over oh, it was a while. I don't know how long ago. It was a while ago, uh, and uh, and that was kind of what me got uh, got me going down this road. Uh, so I definitely can empathize with people who are you know without power, even though it's not a challenge that uh, you know really impacts me that much myself. I can empathize with people who are you know suffering in other ways. Um, but uh, I don't have that visceral experience of going through it right now, and that might make me seem out of touch. But if you're looking for advice from people who uh, you hope can help you to uh, you know, get there yourself, you really should be looking to people that do uh, seem a little bit out of touch with a lot of this kind of stuff. If you are uh, listening to the advice of people who are right in there with you, they're suffering with you, they're starving with you, they don't have access to water with you, they don't have access to power with you, uh, what do they really have to teach you <laughs> that you don't already know? You really should be looking to those out-of-touch people that look or appear to be living in kind of like a fantasy land. Uh, because if those are the results that you're looking to achieve for yourself, those are the kind of people you want to be uh, you know, seeking out because uh, those people created something that you would like to create for yourself. Uh, Aside from that, there are other ways of uh, you know achieving this kind of uh, separatedness, uh, this out of touch with reality uh, in your own life, and probably the simplest way to do that is uh, one of two ways. One, either go through stuff, go through a, a blackout, go through a food insecurity issue, go through water insecurity issue, uh, go through the uh, event yourself uh, in real life, in real time, and either take a mental list or write down a physical list of all the stuff that you wish you had. 
you know, maybe it's a blackout and you're wishing, well, you know, my water comes from a well and I can't run my well pump because I don't have electricity and that means I don't have water. So I'd love to make sure that I have water in the future. That was what I did. Uh, you know, when I was living at my previous house and we lost power for 10 days, I I think one of the biggest things was uh, losing access to water. So that was one of the first things I did. I did not want to have to deal with not having access to water. So make a list. If it, go through these experiences. Whatever you're going through right now, make a list of the stuff that you wish that you had, the stuff that you wish that you had prepared ahead of time, and then at the soon as possible opportunity, prepare that stuff for yourself so that you know when this thing happens again or something similar to it happens again, you will have you know kind of checked that off your list, and that won't be much of an issue. Alternately, you don't really have to go through it because you can vicariously kind of uh, either do it in your own imagination uh, or you can listen to out of touch people like me. Listen to our experiences, listen to things that we've done, and without having to go through that suffering yourself, you can kind of short circuit the process and get to a point where you don't have to go through it. Uh, you know, I could uh, share with you an experience that I've gone through where, uh, well, let's say I, I was running my pantry and I bought a bunch of peanuts. And then I found out that peanuts go rancid after about a year or so. Peanuts don't last very long in a pantry. Cashews will last quite a while in a pantry. In fact, I've got cashews, I think, that are probably more than five years old at the moment, and they still seem perfectly good. But peanuts, they just go rancid. They don't last very long. Listen to that vicarious experience of somebody that's gone through it before, and, you know, kind of check that off your list. If I'm going to put a pantry together, maybe I want to avoid peanuts, unless I'm going to, you know eat a bunch of them, but don't do peanuts for long-term storage. So you can kind of vicariously learn through other people as well. But whatever you do, that should be your goal, is to get yourself out of touch with that suffering. That's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. That's the goal of prepping. You want to be out of touch with that. Again, that, that doesn't and should not mean that you uh, lack compassion for other people that are suffering through it. We should all you know, care about those other people and try to help them, if only for that selfish reason that I mentioned, that the more you can help other people, the less of a problem that they are when the shit hits the fan. Uh, you know, so I think it's good to kind of spread that awareness around as much as possible. Uh, and, and on top of that, you know, we're human beings, and I think if our, our minds are functioning in a healthy way, we just, you know, whether it's in your self-interest or not, you want to help other people. That's just what human beings, that's what we do. That's the way we are. Uh, so, uh, you know, don't cut yourself off to other people's suffering, but Getting out of touch with the suffering and the realities of the world around us is kind of the point of prepping. That's why we do it, and if uh, we aren't out of touch, it means we're not doing something right. That's it. Think about it, start making lists, and thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.